Alex? Can you hear the signal? Pick up. Alex, are you receiving? Pick up. Alex, over. This is Alan James. The revolution starts tonight, Alex, and we need your help. Throughout this broadcast, we're going to ask you to do things that will directly help with this mass protest. I'll be talking to you regularly tonight, and I'll also be hacking in when I can. Please help get our message out. We're on the verge, Alex. You've always been fair and balanced in your approach to us. With your help, we can tip the balance in our favour. If you play our tape at the second break, that's when we think it will have the most impact. It's on your right. ...episode of Just the Job, followed at 10pm by a chance to see the very last episode so? of Just the Jesus. Job. So what? At 10 How's it doing? Dr. How's that now? Oh, you we'll haven't heard from him. To learn He's right a wanted criminal, in Colin. So is my nan, but she never missed her birthday. The Your grandmother's on the run, Colin. The yeah. Armed robbery, resisting arrest, double homicide of the same bloke. She's right off. I hope he's all right, though. No. He's got this far, and your brother was fine. I'm going in ten seconds, everybody! I wonder what they're doing Annoying him, probably. Not probably. Definitely. Going in five, four, three... Good evening. This is the National Nightly News, broadcasting across the territories. My name is Megan Wolf. Our top stories tonight. Future legend. It's been 40 days since Disrupt conducted multiple attacks across the territories. During the coordinated action, subsequently dubbed the Night of Fire, emergency services were kept busy at the agricultural centres, while a series of covert attacks were carried out freeing political prisoners, including former newsman Jeremy Donaldson. Nothing has been heard from the missing journalist since the violent Disrupt attack on his convoy six weeks ago. Donaldson was on his way back to Betterment after his notorious court appearance. All of us here at Channel One hope that wherever he is now, he's safe. Food, glorious food. With the last of the menu centres opening in territories 5, 8 and 14 today, Advance confirmed that the programme is now in full operation, providing free food for every citizen of the new future. What started as rationing during the 20-week war has blossomed into a social contract that is the envy of the unawakened world. Jack Tractor Pants, spokesman for the menu centres, said today that while they can guarantee the contents of every box is nutritious, the actual quality of the meals you cook depends on whether you have a touch of Chef Jordan Rankley or the culinary skills of a professional footballer. If I were a rich man, problems in territories 11, 17 and 22 today as striking bosses attempted to undermine their new economies. With seemingly no awareness of irony, the former CEOs and MDs have come together to form the Wealth Creators Union, with demands including a return to 150% bonuses, private jets and mandatory grovelling zones. In an annoying show of petulance, the former elites drove their luxury vehicles at 10 miles per hour up and down the motorways of their respective territories. The coordinated protest of elites inconvenienced several hundred thousand of their employees. Some fun now. Signs of ever more resistance to advance as radical policies today as popular resistance movement Disrupt extended their reach further across the territories. The organisation's emblem appeared in every major city across the territories last night in a well-coordinated publicity stunt, which has seen them dominate the headlines. Asked about the impressive display earlier today, Disrupt spokesperson Alan James said that the movement was reaching what he described as a critical mass. A poor choice of words given recent history. And final headlines tonight for three stories we've been following closely for the last two and a half years. Foreign Soil, a glimpse today of failed CEO Sophia Remington, who, facing serious criminal charges centred around the details of her pet project, has spent the last year in refuge at the Malvalian Embassy here in the capital. With no end in sight to her self-imposed isolation, the board of Remington's fist removed her as CEO in absentia this morning by a unanimous vote. Sophia was heard to yell something obscene in Malvalian at the assembled journalists before slinking back inside. We didn't catch all of it, but it was something about our mother and a goat. Grave cave. Char-grilled consequences today as a malfunctioning laser wall seems to have incinerated all life in Dante's taint. The high-tech barricade, which received unprecedented funding, was designed by David Wong to separate the battling brainiacs. David's pile of ashes did not immediately respond to our requests for comment. 
personal growth. Reformed bad boy Johnny Hamsleeves proved the naysayers wrong last night as he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Medicine. Hailed as a visionary since his discovery of the cure for cancer last year, Johnny has come a long way from his sporting roots. In his acceptance speech, he acknowledged his battle with addiction and thanked his team of grad students before attempting to swap shirts with the chemistry laureate. All that, plus we'll be taking a trip to Dangley Parts for the notice board, as well as getting a sneak peek at the hottest ticket in town. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. First, 500 days after the loss of a fine leader and a great man, the start of tonight's programme is dedicated to remembering and celebrating the life of Peter Clement. Patrick Bannon is live from Parliament Park, where Julia Salisbury will be breaking ground on what will soon be a memorial garden in Peter's honour. Patrick. Listening to that old bitch lying through her teeth about missing that poor uh, bastard. Patrick. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're live. Because I'm not being funny, things were better with Peter, weren't they? Because Patrick. They were, and I don't mind saying it. They were, because he held her back. But now, now there's no stopping Hello, her. Hello, Patrick, we're oh, live. Of course, can't say that, can I, Francis? No, 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 not with public ownership. No, with public oh, ownership, you can't say anything these days. Oh, she's lost it, mate. She's completely off the rocker. I heard from an aide. That... Hello, Megan, you join me here live from the what? Hello, Megan, you join me here live from the what? Oh. Oh. Uh, uh. Seems like we've lost some signal there for a moment. Well, we will be going live to that groundbreaking ceremony just as soon as we can get Patrick back. <laughs> Meanwhile, let me just say, I think the memorial gardens are going to be gorgeous. I've had a sneak peek at the designs and Alana Marsh has done a fabulous job. Oh, OK, all right, it seems like we have got the signal back. We can now go live to Patrick Bannon in Parliament Park. Patrick. Thank you, Megan. I'm Patrick Bannon. And we are indeed live here. Apologies for the technical difficulties there, but any moment now, Julia Salisbury will step out on stage behind me. Alex, Bozeman here. The boys in editing have just informed me that the eulogy footage isn't fully cut together yet. You're going to have to do it on the fly. For goodness sake, make sure you make it look good. Slowly gathering since this afternoon. This is Alan. You can undermine them here and help us win hearts and minds. We can look bad, Alex. Really bad. And it seems like the ceremony is getting underway. Here is Prime Minister Julia Salisbury, the picture of elegance to begin her address. Good evening, fellow teammates and friends. 500 days ago, all of our lives changed irrevocably. Still reeling from the triumphs and tribulations of Liberation Night, another great loss befell the people of these newly united territories. The loss of a leader, a statesman, a dear friend and a hero, Peter Gordon Clement. Peter's death at the age of just 62, of course, announced by the team on the 24th of December, just six weeks after Liberation Night. Born to a working-class family on a housing estate in Rothering, Peter first trained as a carpenter before getting his start on television, first moving and building scenery and then developing into the personality that we all knew and loved so much. Just the job first hit our screens over 25 years ago, running for 11 series, winning multiple awards and charming audiences up and down the country. Peter taught us, all of us, not to be content with the way things are, not to accept inequities, no matter how small. But he also taught us what it took to fight. And much later, late night chat show PT, which at its peak drew millions of viewers. Peter was by no means a saint. <laughs> Trust me, he once told me he had more regrets than he'd had stolen dinners. <laughs> He always did have a knack for a turn of phrase. But it speaks to the strength of his character 
that he chose to share with us his mistakes alongside his achievements, his faults as well as his talents. Peter had the heart to give it all, all he had for the people of these United Territories. Famous for his potty mouse, it's estimated conservatively that Peter Clement uttered over 1.5 million swear words during his career, though some sources put this figure well in excess of 2 million F-bombs alone. Gripped by illness as he was in the weeks and months leading up to Liberation Night, he wasn't the man we loved. He wasn't the man we loved. But his eyes still twinkled with that familiar joy for life, that spark of wit and wisdom of a life lived for others. Prime Minister Clement, of course, died from apparent liver failure after suffering from the long-term effects of alcohol abuse. I first met Peter nearly 20 years ago. Moments before I was supposed to give a speech. Not unlike this one, actually. Only I'd, um, I'd spilt coffee all down myself. And I was young, nervous, desperate to be liked. And from behind me, I heard, Christ, pet, you've either pissed your kex or sprung a leak, but either way, you've got a problem. <laughs> And before I could even say a word, he stripped off his dry trousers and insisted I took them. <laughs> that was the sort of man that Peter Clement was. Kind, compassionate, sensitive, a brilliant thinker, a natural leader, but mostly a good man. This glorious nation of ours, so beautiful and new, this shining beacon of... Thank you, Alex. There'll be another opportunity to steer public perception soon. It's really starting. You'll know when. ...his accomplishments, the future he forged, the, the boundaries he pushed. To me, he'll always be the man in his pants cheering on a stranger at the back of the conference. It is my great honour to give to you the Peter Clement Memorial Garden. Oh, should we see if we can get a countdown going? Everyone with me. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Now, Alex, control the message. I'm not leaving, I can't. Oi. You two, come with me. <laughs> Don't panic. Are <laughs> <laughs> you hurting me? Well, stop resisting then. Stop resisting and we'll let you up. I'm not resisting. Ah, fuck what you. What are you doing? I'm not resisting. You're sore. Huh? I'm not resisting. I... Turn the camera off. I National Night News. We have the right to be here. I said turn the fucking camera off. <laughs> Oh, who the fuck are you? Oh, I can't hear you. I, I can't hear anything. Yes, you can. Medics, just, just stay with me. Here you are. I'm from the National Nightly News. Well, then you can consider this payback. Salisbury's still here. Salisbury's still here. Julia Salisbury! Sandy Bay's are requested. Target approaching Sunbird. Target armed. Haven't you done enough? Look Sorry. around you! Fucking this is time. what your precious freedom looks like, is it? Oh, the fire! Our territory won! Rise up! Take to the streets! The time has come! Stop fires! Break windows! Draw them out! They can't stop us all! Resist! Distract me! Lower your weapons! Make this is a kill. Lower your weapons! Get out of here! No. What are you doing? Come on! No. No. I said, please turn it off. Shocking scenes from the Capitol there, exclusively on the National Nightly News. And our apologies to any of our viewers who might have found this evening's events upsetting. But at the National Nightly News, we believe in bringing you the raw, unedited truth as it happens. And we make no apologies for that.
We'll update you on the latest from this disrupt attack later in the programme, but when we come back, it's time for happier pursuits, and you know what that means by now. Don't go away. We'll be back after this. We'll be back after this. Does anyone know if, if everyone's safe? Are the crew OK? Oh, fine. Safe, everyone was a good distance from the unit base. That didn't go so well, Alex. But we can turn it around in the next segment. Tonight, this is the big one. Great. So there's a revolution happening outside and we're off to dangle the fucking parts. That's journalism, apparently. Can we get set for the next sequence? Pamper yourself and spend, spend, spend. Mrs. Neal, come on in. Tell them about our thrones. We've got big thrones. Big thrones for big butts. Here, have some money. And the more you spend, the more you save. We've got bigger thrones. Mansion thrones. Thrones you can throw at stones. Stones as big as thrones. What do we got? The rounds. We got tons of thrones. We got thrones to put in your hallway, to put in your stairway, to put in your doorway. What do we got? Mm -hmm. Oh, doorways. No, thrones! 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 We've got all sorts of crazy stuff to bling your experience. You want it in gold? We've got it in gold. We've got gold-plated strawberry, gold-plated bikes, gold-plated cars, gold-plated helicopter, gold-plated jet plane. We've got gold-plated gold! We gold-plated, gold we melt it back down, we gold-plated again! Gold! Gold! gold. Alex, during this next section, a cameraman working in the newsroom, who's one of us, is going to get a coded location out. We don't know yet which camera he's on, but if we find out, I'll let you know. Just keep your eyes out for the fist and try and keep it on the ear for at least five seconds. Our operatives will do the rest. Again, this is your new makeup artist, Craig. No. What? No. Ten seconds, everybody. Sorry, Craig. Okay, we are going in five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News with me, Welcome Megan Wolfe. Very shortly, we'll be heading on over to the final Very episode shortly, of what has quickly become a hugely successful feature, The Notice Board. But before we do, let's chat with Philippa Radin. Tell me, why do you think the public love The Notice Board so much? It's real. <laughs> there, I said it. it. It connects with people. You know, people look at us and they say, those are real people struggling with real problems. That's a, that's a really interesting point. Yeah, I mean, I was saying to my PA secretary as I got out of the limo, I was saying, it's good for people to see normal, authentic people like them on TV. Mm, people like you. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> Unfortunately, then I was interrupted by some dreadful wretch who wanted an autograph, but a swift kicking from security soon put him back in line. <laughs> Yes, well, I think it's really good that our screens are filled with such relatable stories. So, the notice board is coming to an end after a sensational time at the top. What do you think has made this show so successful? Oh, it's a combination of so many things. Um, my hard work, um, my talent, my look. Wow, you really have a lot to thank you for. Hey, hey, hey. You're welcome. Mm. We just heard our man's on camera four. I have a real sense of responsibility now. You know, Get back to the interview, Alex. Something precious, and that I should use that platform for good. Yeah, I think that's really important that we should use this platform to, to do good in the world. I agree. That's exactly it. So I've decided to help as many. Excellent work, Alex. That's the location shared. Next, you'll need to give them the go. Is that um, better access to education or you know, reducing child poverty? Oh, no, by adopting as many as I can get my hands on. <laughs> oh, OK. Uh, how, many, how many children have you adopted? Oh, we're well into the double figures now, Megan. I stopped counting in the late 30s. <laughs> Goodness, that is a lot of children. Yeah, once we finish putting them into the guest room, I'll have to put a futon in the laundry cupboard. Oh, you really are some sort of hero. Hey. I live a privileged life, what can I say? I mean, any child I can take on is a child rescued from suffering. Poor children, were their lives really that bad before? Oh, they're Northerns, I presume so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's shocking to think, actually, that only one in 10,000 children have a celebrity parent. Hmm, I'd never thought of it that way before. Well, I'm doing everything I can to fix those numbers. What do you think it is about your life that's so desirable, then? Well, 
it's mainly shame and panic interspersed with expensive bottled water. So, uh, actually, if anyone wants to, I'd happily trade. <laughs> now that I can relate to. Right, <laughs> you better go off and get ready. That was Philippa Raiden sharing some thoughts about her lifestyle. I think it's really important to stay grounded and keep everything in perspective. Clearly, not everyone else agrees, but that's enough for me. Let's go now over to Dangly Parts for the final ever episode of The Notice Board. What a day! First a tea morning, and now to post this notice. I don't know how I managed to cope with it all. Oh, wait. Perhaps I do. Oh! By St Barnabas, what on earth is all this? Freeze, dirtbag! Oh, Laura, it's you. I thought for a moment you were a knife-wielding mugger or stabber. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. It's just me, a community cohesion officer, responsible for keeping crime at record lows. Of course, keep forgetting that thanks to you and your colleagues, violence on our streets is a thing of the past. What's all this, Vicar? I know, it's a disgrace. Somebody it's time for the go code. Give us three boos in a row, Alex. That will start the pencil movement. We might just pull this off. Push forwards! Three boos, Alex. Careful, Vicar. It looks heavy. Ha! They don't call me the right reverend. Ripped for no reason. Yes! It's no good. It looks it's like all those crucifix like classes were a waste of time. <laughs> Perhaps you, a young CCO, would be able to move it. Two for two. Fantastic. <laughs> looks like all those lifting classes were a waste of time. <laughs> it's too heavy. Even for me, a strong and capable You did it, Alex. We're good to go. Charge! To lift this... Did someone call for the best firefighter in town? Firefighter in town? Hi! Well done, Captain Evans. You're so much stronger than us. Especially me, the weak old man. It's the least I could do for my community. <laughs> No luck catching the little devil no then? Unfortunately the not. Then. The ferret struck again last night. When Ray opened the post office this morning, he found that every single stamp had been pre-licked. God! Some people have no decency. Sadly, if we don't catch him before tomorrow, we may have to cancel the village fate. Don't worry. We won't let that happen. Will we, Vicar? No, no, no. No, Laura, no, no. tell me, why do they call him me, the ferret? Some him? say it's because of his sneaky nature. But really, it's because whenever he strikes, really he always leaves behind the foul stench of urine. Never fear, officer. We'll catch this pissy nuisance and save the village fate. Or my name's not Captain Danger Evans. <laughs> The community cohesion team are doing their best, but they simply don't have the smarts to solve this mystery. But I know someone who does. Someone who's about to blow this thing wide open. <laughs> Me! Blackout! It's the morning of the village fate, the thanks to theatrical the convention. I sure hope everything goes to plan. Oh, look! There's Mrs Craven setting up her cake stall. And look, 
There's the motorcycle display team setting up for a show that will be far too expensive for live television. I'm going to set up the coconut shy. What are you doing, Vicar? First, I'm running the tombola. Then, I'll be selling forgiveness for money. Aren't you judging the jams? I couldn't possibly. Well, that sounded like Mrs. Craven. <gasps> Looks like someone sucked all the jam out of her donuts. Shut down, Ferret, to struck again. Whatever are we to do? Although I'm very competent, I have no idea how to solve this case. I guess we'll just have to cancel the fate. Hold it right there, Ferret. <gasps> Me? Been drinking from the fire extinguishers again? Not you! The vicar! I don't know what you're talking about. Admit it. You wanted the village fate cancelled so you could have the day off, didn't you? I already have to work Sundays. I shouldn't have to work two days a week. <gasps> but how did you know? Well, my first clue was the smell. Yes, I do smell of urine. Next, I noticed that the vicar's tongue was particularly dry, almost as if he'd been licking thousands and thousands of stamps. Or perhaps eating Mrs. Craven's baking. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me on to my third clue. The vicar said that he had no more room for jam. Almost as if he'd had his fill. Precisely. But you managed to figure it all out from that. Well, I also uh, found this at the scene. <laughs> that proves nothing. No! Get him out of here, officer! You did it, Captain. You could say you ferreted him out. <laughs> hey, come on. Let's go and have a party in my massive garden. I am doing well. Thanks to you, we're all doing well. Well, that was it. The final ever episode of The Notice Board. And what a way to end it. Thank you, as always, to Jeff, Philippa and Tommy. After the break, we'll be both dancing and learning. So don't change that channel. We'll be right back. That's the ads. Well done, everybody. Wow! Ah, what a brilliant run, eh? After party at my place, eh? Yeah? Hey, hey, Alex, this station is supposed to be unbiased. Your partisan behaviour will end up getting us taken into public ownership even sooner. Less revolutionary zeal. Do your job. And how progressive their policies are. Oh, for... Well, I was wrong. And I'm here tonight to say I'm sorry. And to beg for your forgiveness. One last push, Alex. We're closing in. One of the guests in the last section is working with us. You'll be asked to censor on our behalf. If you do it right, the final orders will be given. We'll get three chances. Get at least two of them right, and we're gonna win this thing. It's happening, Alex. Tonight, we take it back. So when Advance came to power, I didn't think about the damage they would do. I... I acted selfishly. I was glad to see the rich punished. I didn't see how backwards advance were. I didn't understand that rather than tearing down the wealth creators, we should have been helping everyone else to take a seat at their table. Under advance, the country is poor. It is poor in ambition, it is poor in aspiration. We are infantilized by Advance's naive policies. Please, Sarah, policies anything. Sorry, Mum, I'm really not supposed to say. Are we safe? Hi, I'm Maddie. Uh, Johnny just said to ask if you need a touch up. I have put myself out to the media to defend. That's my shade, is it? Uh, yeah. This is my I shade. My parents. Mm. I see that now. Mum. Dad. You can run back to Jenny now. Our only hope. Sorry about that, Sarah. Nothing the you can tell me. Hope. At all, like, at all. They've said no one's died, no that's lies. all I can say. Oh. Ten seconds. What's wrong with you? She is in tears. Ugh. Going in five, four, three. 
Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Later in this segment, we're hoping to be able to go back to Patrick Bannon at the scene of tonight's shocking disrupt attack. But first, I'm delighted to be joined by the cast of the smash hit musical Everyone is Talking About. I'll be speaking with the cast in a moment, but first, let's take a look at them in action. Please give a warm National Nightly welcome to the Novaries. Hello? Doctor? Yes, I see. Thank you for letting me know. I have a decent life. I'm a happy, loving wife. And my job is well paid and fulfilling. I have a husband, John. He's due home soon, won't be long. And I have to tell him something that is absolutely chilling. We share coffee. Is it cancer? What's up, John? We're having a baby. How can this be? Oh, woe is me. Why has this happened to me? I always wear two condoms for the maximum of safety. In our tiny flat, we built a peaceful habitat. Now our lives are fucked with having a baby. baby. Now you can't have any wine at the club. And there won't be any time. Now your hair will stink of weed And you'll start to disagree And forget about that holiday in Territory 3 No more waking up at half past ten In fact you're never going to get a good night's sleep again No more snap decisions to go on to a club You'll be lucky if you even make it out to the pub Why can't we be more like our gay and lesbian jobs? It comes from personal bums Now when I take a sick day at home The parasite won't leave you alone How he's grown! We're our top priority I look after you And you look after me Ain't no trouble and strife We got a childless life It's more than a passing craze 
amazing. The Novaries there, treating us to their opening number from Energy for a Childless Life, which is currently the hottest ticket in the capital theatre district. And we'll be touring the territories later this year. Right then, come on, you got. Come on down. Let's go. Don't be shy. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Megan. Hi. It's an honour to be here. Oh, really? Are you fans of the show? Yeah, it used to be. <laughs> well, listen, let's get stuck in. You're an amazing musical. Now, I mean, not only do you perform this show every single night... With matinees on Wednesday and Saturday! <laughs> right, but you're also the show's creators, am I right? Well, everyone contributed their ideas, and then some of us went away and did the actual work on the script. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's very much a team effort. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> How rude of me. I've not introduced any of you. <laughs> I'll be the one being replaced next. Let's go down the line, shall we? Hi, I'm Jack. <laughs> Jim Blunt. Pleasure to be here. Jennifer Boreham Woodley. Hello, I'm John. John Sapley. Hello, I'm used to be John in the business professionally. My name's Jill, with a J. And I'm Janet. I'm the youngest. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> and you were all friends previously. I mean, what a, what a coincidence, right? I mean, what a coincidence. With your names begin, beginning with a J. <laughs> Oh my goodness, guys! Our names all begin with J! How <laughs> have we never noticed that? Uh, because you haven't typed them out a thousand times? <laughs> you knew? Why didn't you say anything? I thought we all knew. It's bloody obvious, isn't it? I just thought we were doing a funny thing where we never mentioned it. <laughs> and I believe, as well as being friends, you're also couples. You know, in real life as well as in the show. Well, oh, 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 well. <laughs> not exactly. No. I'm not married to him. Uh, <laughs> I'm with Janet. And I'm with John, you lucky bean. <laughs> Jim and I are married. Four fabulous years. <laughs> well, that must make for some confusion in the rehearsal room. Well, you should have seen the first draft. Jen decided that Jack would play Jim, I would play Jack. Jen, Janet, Jill, Jen, Janet, Jill. What about John? Well, my character was originally just called Man One. It was allegorical. It was very confusing. Not for a professional. After <laughs> much doing and throwing. And gnashing and wailing. <laughs> and gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> we decided that we'd just use our own names, which um, is less truthful. We're also less likely to go into the wrong dressing rooms. Oh, God, yeah, that would be very embarrassing, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, of course, when I first wrote it, we were only meant to run for a few nights at the Mimbley Village Hall, but when I registered it with the Department for Culture, it caught the eye of someone high up, and before you could say overnight sensation, we were transferring to the capital! <laughs> it's all been a bit of a roller coaster, really. I'm only 19. I'm the youngest. You really don't have to repeat that. <laughs> I had to give up my job as a mortuary technician. Well, yes, we all had to move to the capital. <laughs> <laughs> I love that job. It's been a very turbulent time. So peaceful, no singing. This piece isn't peaceful. Stand by, Alex. Sense of the orange. It's about children and why you shouldn't have them. <laughs> In a way, I guess it is political, with a small p. After all, we are a solid unit, and eagle-eyed audience members will see we nod our heads to advance on stage throughout, and we target the messaging at women aged 22, well, about 35, as they're the most likely to be afflicted by this terrible problem. Terrible problem. Having children. Well, you understand, Megan. You clearly agree. This isn't about me. So. Of course, we see that there are advantages to a family unit, but eagle-eyed couples watch as the little parasites advance on their lives, and there's no time to play the guitar, get through a book, or watch a movie. They're exhausted, passed out on the couch by 20 to 9, for God's sake. You're very chatty tonight, dear. Usually I'm the chatty one. Because you're the youngest, we know! It's not a badge of honour, Janet. <laughs> Janet, please, Jennifer. Oh, well said, John. Thanks, Janet. Got you back. So, could, um, could you just tell us uh, what is the play about? Mm. What happens in yes. it? Well, go ahead. It's a tragedy, obviously. <laughs> um, Jennifer, myself, and John have their child, and then the story charts the downfall of their hopes and dreams. And there's lots of singing. And dancing! <laughs> A lot. My character works at a menu centre for a distribution unit. Eagle-eyed, she sees her friend's rapid advance to a pit of despair. Becoming a target for children's TV advertising at the age of 22, she decides to take drastic action. I can't really say more, though. I 
probably said too much already. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's not spoil the second act for anyone who might come to see it. it. <laughs> Which should be all of you. <laughs> for too long, we've been told that a life without children is somehow incomplete, that, that children are, are a blessing. Well, I've done the research, and they're not. <laughs> Besides, there's already loads of bastards running around all over the place, so... We just want people to have the option of a happy, child-free life without stigma. <laughs> you know, when I was 14, before I had come out, <laughs> I had an experience with a girl called Julia Jacobs. She was an experiment, I guess, you know, a chance to... Dip my toes into the aisle. Well, thank you all so much for coming in tonight. I really hope you keep them dancing in the aisles for many performances to come. The no is there. And I am pleased to say we can now go back to Patrick Bannon to get the latest from the scene of tonight's horrific events. Patrick, are you okay? Thank you, Megan. This is Patrick Bannon reporting from the scene of tonight's devastating and symbolic attack tonight this evening. An attack which I myself have been found myself caught up in. Uh, I'm still a little dazed and a little deaf, Megan. So I hope you'll forgive me if I seem that it's time to speak with the Prime Minister. Mrs Salisbury, that's you. You're still here. The Prime Minister. I couldn't leave. Not, not when there were people that needed help. Any team player would have done the same. I don't deserve praise for being human. Yes, no accolades here. Or palisades. Or lemonade. Right. Or lemonade. So, is the situation right. now, are we safe? Is the situation uh, now, are we safe? Yes. Um, the security yes. services perform their duties without hesitation. And I would like to assure the public that although there have been some injuries, there were no civilian deaths here this evening. Oh, that's good news about the civ... Sorry, did you... Did you say no deaths? That's right. No, no deaths? civilian deaths. Just the four disrupt terrorists curtailed by law enforcement who were, as always, so cohesive. If I may, I have a message for your viewers. Of course, the camera, there's the camera. Speak there, on, on the camera there. Stay at home tonight. Stay at home tonight. Do not become another casualty of war. Disrupt have had their moment, but as the dear departed Peter Clements once famously said, it ends today. Thank you, Prime Minister, Thank for those strong words of strength. Back to the studio, Megan now in the studio with Megan Wolf now. Patrick Bannon there, bravely reporting from the front line of tonight's horrifying bombing. Maybe you need to get checked out, Patrick. Well, that brings us to the end of tonight's National Nightly News. Victory is in sight, my friends. You have mobilised. You have come together from our agents at the television networks risking arrest and getting those words to you to the many hundreds and thousands gathering to invade team headquarters. As I speak, we are turning the tide and it is time for change. Tonight we topple their regime and we also silence their mouthpiece. Channel One, time to wake up. Out from the shadows and they are not the overwhelming force they would have you believe. The military have been actioned and, well, pretty scary at night, so stay at home. Stay at home. Because the team tournaments will soon be over and we can once again focus our minds on building the new future with equality, fairness and resources for all. My name is Megan Wolfe. Let's make tomorrow. And we're out. Well, I think I threw up a bit. Oh, right, Alex. Tonight is the beginning of the fall of advance. Let's check it out the clock. Charges is rigged, sir. Permission to detonate. Permission granted, old friend. We are going to detonate. Look out your window, Alex. See what you help make.